How's it going everyone? David from DOD Media. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can track flares or lights or any object really by using the basic tracker in After Effects to track a tiny source point or object. It's pretty simple. Let's jump in. So I have this clip from a shoot that I did in Belgium for a client. They're a big wind farm energy company. In fact, Belgium's biggest. And the idea of the shoot was to show a sort of day in the life of some of the staff who actually operate and maintain the wind turbines offshore. So we've got this first clip, which is our opening clip of me tracking slowly backwards while this hangar door opens and they all walk out, hauling up their gear, hiking up their harnesses and stuff and they've all got these headlamps on. Now, if I actually remove the four flares that I added, you see that only three of them actually have the headlamps on. One of them doesn't even have a headlamp. And they're just, they're just not all that impressive to look at as far as headlamps are concerned. And I thought, you know what? Really spice up that shot by just bam. Now, I did use optical flares to do this, but if you don't have optical flares, that's not a problem because the basis of this tutorial is actually to show you just how to track that. And then you can apply whatever lighting source you want to. You can use the default flares, even though they're not great. They kind of, they work in a tight spot, but there are a million other ways that you can add a light that does actually flare to a source without having to use optical flares. The internet is full of them. But anyway, let me show you how I actually tracked those points on those helmets using the built-in tracker in After Effects. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a duplicate of that example one sequence that I showed you there. Let's rename it to tutorial, tutorial, tutorial. And let's just go ahead and delete all of that. And let's go into our clip properties by hitting U, all of the keyframed properties, and let's just delete all of the motion trackers as well. This clip is now, for all intents and purposes, a source clip with nothing affecting it. All right. So to begin, we're gonna find a frame where the object that you wanna track is very visible, is very easy for you to hone in on with the tracker. Now, luckily for me, all three of these headlamps, well, they're pretty obvious all the way through. So that's gonna be an easy one to track. The one that might be a bit tricky to add is adding on this headlamp to this guy here because he doesn't actually have a headlamp. So tracking his helmet, I'm gonna to have to use that tiny little black node that you see on his helmet there and hopefully the tracker does a decent job of it. So to get started, come to your tracker window. If you don't see it there, come up to window and tracker right there. Now there's a few different options that you can choose in the tracker window. You can track the camera so that it actually tracks the entire scene and the movement in the scene and the depth in the scene based on that movement. And then it'll give you loads of little tracking points. That's really good when you want to integrate something into the scene, be it text or a logo or that kind of thing. Although I don't think it works all that well necessarily. So if you're interested in learning more about integrating stuff into a scene, highly recommend you use a planar tracker instead like Mocha. I've done a tutorial up there, go check it out. But for this tutorial, what I'm actually gonna be doing is going track motion. Now track motion is gonna create a track point, track point one on this clip. And so what I can do is now come in, select this, drag it around to where I want it to actually track as a source point. So this nice little bright area here that looks good. That's, that's gonna be an easy track for it. Now, the bigger the window, the more processing power it's gonna take. Depending on what you're tracking, sometimes it'll make it far more accurate, sometimes it'll screw up your track. Like here, for example, there are more objects moving around behind him, his head is gonna be turning, so it's not really gonna know what to do with that tracking point. So instead, what I'm gonna do is really narrow down the source of that onto just that LED on his head. And then this little panel here is more of a sort of threshold panel that if there's a fast movement, it can really reach beyond just trying to track onto that point. It can say, okay, well look within that window where that point has gone. So this one, it's nice to have it a bit bigger, not stupid amounts bigger, but you'll get a more accurate track if it's a little bit bigger and it will take longer for your processor to turn through it, sure, but it's better to do it right the first time than to have to waste time fine tuning and trial and erroring it because you couldn't be bothered to make the window big enough in the first place. All right, next up, I'm going to right click, create a null object. I'm gonna call this null object track one. If you don't know how to rename stuff like that, just hit enter or return on your keyboard when you have the layer selected and it'll allow you to rename it. Now come back to your clip here. So now what we can do is adjust the parameters of the tracker. So motion source, yep, the clip, that's what I want. The current tracker, tracker one, great. 
track type, I want it to transform because I want it to move whatever I'm going to pair it to, I want it to move it in X and Y space. Now, because I'm gonna be overlaying a light source onto this, I don't need it to rotate, I don't need it to scale, I just need it to move in position in X and Y space. And that's handy because that's the most simple way of tracking as well. You only have one source to track. Whereas for rotation and scale, you need to add two source points so that it can actually determine how much rotation and scale is happening in the clip. So next up, you can edit your target. Now, because I only have one other item on this composition, it's obviously gonna choose it by default, but automatically I think what happens here is that it chooses the very, very top layer that's in your composition. So you may need to change this if you have more than two layers. Then you can go into your options. You can choose the tracker name. That's fine, tracker one is fine, I don't mind that. The tracker plugin, you just use the built-in one unless you have other ones installed, in which case I've no idea why you're watching this tutorial. The channel to track, I tend to find that luminance works the best. Uh, if you're tracking a specific color dot, then RGB will work really well as well. But for this example, I'm gonna use luminance. After that, I like to keep sub-pixel positioning enabled and then adapt feature if confidence is below 80%. I'm not sure if that's the default for After Effects or not. That's just what I've found I like to use. It may well be that it's the default. It's been so long. Okay, and then when you're ready to track, you just hit this Analyze Forward clip. Now, depending on the speed of your processor and the file type that you're using, this is a ProRes clip, so After Effects is gonna run through it really quickly. Uh, if it's an H.264 clip, it might take a little bit longer. Now, you notice there that that suddenly jumped. So if we go back a few frames by using page up or page down or control or option, back arrow or forward arrow, um, well, you can skip back through these frames and you can see that each frame, it's dropped a little tracking node. So it's all precise up to here, up to frame 157. But then at frame 158, suddenly it decides that it's no longer tracking the LED and it's gonna track a different part of his helmet instead. So what you can do here is a few things, right? First of all, what I would suggest you try is that you just go back to the previous frame where it's still on that thing that it's meant to be tracking and just try and press play again and see if it skips again or sometimes it just corrects itself. See, it's just corrected itself, but then it's messed up a few frames later. So let's go back, back to that point where it screws up. Right, so there it's still on the, on the headlamp, so let's just go from there. Yep, working lovely, working lovely. All the way, ah, nearly all the way to the end. Okay, uh, so let's go from there. There we go. Now, if I run back through this, you can see that that has tracked that headlamp pretty much all the way. Now I can see why it would think that it wanted me to track something else because you can see there's a little bright spot there on the helmet and that's what it was trying to go towards to track because it's still within that threshold zone. So it's an understandable error, probably my own fault. Now you can also see that it's kind of offset the track a little bit, but that doesn't bother me um, because I'm gonna be tracking a pretty bright source of light there, so you're not actually gonna see where the center is. But if that does really bother you, just go back to the point where it is well centered, and you can even just adjust the center tracking point a little bit, and just track forward from there again. All right, and then I realized that I didn't do any tracking on the very first frame, so I'm gonna come to frame two, and just go back one frame. There we go, done. Now I'll hit apply. Apply dimensions X and Y, okay. And now this null object that you can see here is going to track along to that headlamp. Brilliant. So then what you can do is create a solid. And that solid is what we're gonna put whatever effect we want to track onto. So we'll make it the comp size. Okay, we'll call this flare. Now actually for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not gonna use optical flares. I'm just gonna use the regular built-in flare. Lens flare. There we go. Look at that, disgusting. So which is the nicest one? 105 prime, 35 mil. It's gotta be 35 mil prime. Right, okay. Uh, goodness, this is gross. Okay, so then go ahead and change the blending mode either to add or screen, whichever one you think affects your picture the nicest. I feel like add just really 
it really burns out that highlight, whereas screen keeps it as the flare is intended to be. So I'm gonna go with screen. Then you're gonna hit P on your tracker, and you're gonna come to your flare, hit E, drop down that lens flare, because it's gonna show you your effects when you hit E, drop down that lens flare, and where you have flare center, here you're gonna alt click that little stopwatch so that it opens up an expression panel. Now we could go ahead and type an expression that would make these values here correspond to these values here, or we can just take this pick whip and go down to position. And now it'll say this comp dot layer parentheses track one, which is this null object transform position. All right, and now our big disgusting lens flare is coming out of that guy's face. So let's drop the uh, brightness down until it doesn't look ridiculous. Okay, that'll do. Let's zoom to fit. And now if we play, there you go. It's not actually as bad as I thought it would be. Cool. And now if we zoom in nice to uh, like, let's say 100%, you can see all the little discrepancies of movement in the flares in the light itself. It's all really following all of the tiny movements that are happening, instead of just trying to keyframe that source to move like roughly with it, you're really tracking that quite precisely so that it moves and jitters and everything exactly like that headlamp does in your source footage. So then you can just go ahead and add that to all of those other lights. Now, for example, here, this guy here where there's no headlamp, it's the same thing in theory, except that instead of tracking a bright part, you're gonna be tracking a dark part on the helmet. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's come back down to our tracker, track motion. We've got tracker two, cool. That's gonna come up here and it's gonna sit right there on that black part there. Then this is gonna come down, really narrow that center down. And let's make this a little bit smaller as well so that it doesn't try and hook on to anything beyond uh, you know, the helmet. Then we're gonna take flare and track one and we're gonna duplicate them with command or control D. Automatically, they should rename themselves to Track 2 and Flare 2 if you've duplicated them. Then we're going to select Flare 2 and hit U on the keyboard twice so that it opens up your expression properties. And here in Track 1, we're just going to change the name of that to Track 2. And that way it's going to follow this null object and not this null object because we're about to change the position of Track 2. So now again, back to our source footage, back to Track Point 2, edit the target and drop this down to Track 2. Okay, once again, we're just doing our position and let's see what it does. Okay, oh, already screwed up, right? So we go back to where it was last precise. There we go, and we continue. Oh, and again. Oh, I saw one skip there. <laughs> this is not good. I swear I didn't have this much problem with it when I did the initial track. Okay, so from there, okay, it's tracking well, tracking well, tracking well. Can't actually see it in the frame, so let's zoom out. Oh, is that it? Okay, and then let's just track backwards because I started the track there. So let's zoom back in, see what we're doing. So now we track backwards because I only tracked from one second, 24 frames. So the first part of it, there's nothing tracking. So you analyze backwards. Okay, that, that worked fairly well. There were a few instances of correction, but it's fairly easy to, to manage that. So you apply that again, X and Y, lovely. And now because we duplicated it all and reset that expression, it's already just gonna be tracking that part of the helmet that that guy's got on there that we tracked, even though there's no light on that helmet. There is now a light on that helmet. So now if you didn't like the uh, default lens flare colors that it's offering you there. Well, you can affect those with a curves um, adjustment. So if you open up your curves and drop it on, let's say flare two, well then we can drop down the red and be like, well, actually we kind of want it to be a little bit more on the bluish side, bluey green. Uh, so let's just go ahead and drop this down and then let's go to blue and just boost those blues up. And now it's a typical kind of sci-fi space flare on the face. It's looking nice and blue, just how I want it. And so I can go ahead and copy that and add it to this one. So now everything's blue. 
And since we have these null objects set up and those are our sources for information for tracking, you can track more than just a lens flare to it. For example, we could, uh, well, what could we do? We could take an ellipse tool here. We could make it a nice, long, narrow little thing like that. We could come up to our center tool, hold command or control to center the anchor point onto the middle of that object. And then come up here to uh, glow. Just add your glow to that. Then let's come back, grab our curves again, control C and dump that on that glow. And just for emphasis, let's make the glow this kind of, I don't know, this kind of teal. Let's see if that works with it. Then I'll turn it to add. That looks absolutely terrible. So what I'm gonna do is go to mask, new mask, which is the size of that thing. And I'm just gonna add some feathering to that mask. And then I'm gonna take up position. I'm going to hit U, U twice. I'm gonna copy this expression. I'm going to alt click on position for our shape. And I'm gonna paste that expression. And now I have a very, very, very poor man's anamorphic flare. Oh my God, that's the most ridiculous thing ever. But you get the point. The point is that you can track anything to that null object because that null object is what holds the data, not the flares, not the, the weird light streak thing. And there you go. That is how you use the basic tracker in After Effects to track lights or objects to sources or spots that you would use on your footage. All right, let me know what you thought down below. Also, um, what do you think of this lighting? Got that nice rim light coming in there. Got some solid red. I am totally ripping this off from Gerald Undone. I know, I know, but I'm okay with it. But let me know what you think. Should I stick with the RGB or should I just go back to normal colors? You tell me, you decide. All right, I hope you found this useful, entertaining, educational, cool. Give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and hit that subscribe button. I will see you next time. Cheers.